Meanwhile, the World Health Organization has held off on declaring a global health emergency over the new coronavirus, and that decision following two days of talks. A declaration could lead to a more coordinated global response to the outbreak, including possible trade and travel restrictions. And we're now joined by WHO spokesperson Tarek Yatsarovich. Tarek, thank you very much for joining us. But, you know, um, what happened today? It's a bit too early to make the declaration, according to WHO Director General. So the question is, what would be the tipping point then? Can I just uh, please uh, invite you not to call this virus Wuhan virus. This uh, virus is called novel coronavirus until the, uh, the definitive name is being given through the uh, procedures. Uh, now, as Director General has said uh, uh, yesterday that uh, we may reconvene emergency committee uh, at a very short notice. Uh, Director General recognized that uh, this is clearly an emergency in China and there is a, a high risk of further spread. Uh, but uh, the, the, there were different opinions in emergency committee uh, and obviously uh, the, the, they may meet again as situation develops. So, Tarek, one consideration has been that there hasn't been evidence yet of human-to-human -human transmission outside of China so far. But if we wait until then, wouldn't it be like closing the barn door after the horse has bolted? No, that's not, that's not correct. There are a number of considerations that are being looked at uh, and different opinions. We know there is a human-to-human -human transmission uh, and uh, we have seen cluster uh, of uh, uh, cases around close contacts uh, uh, be around people who have been uh, infected. Uh, we are likely to see uh, more cases uh, in any case uh, as we step up surveillance. What we want really uh, is two things. First, we want all countries to be on alert. We want health systems uh, to raise their level of preparedness so they can quickly detect sick people. Uh, they can uh, uh, diagnose them and test them, and they can provide medical care. Uh, we also want uh, population uh, to be, uh, uh, to be uh, following the advice from public health authorities. And for the time being, we are giving the, uh, the advice that is usually being given for respiratory uh, illnesses. And at the same time, we need to understand the virus better. We know it's a coronavirus, so we know that uh, there is a human-to-human -human, uh, uh, transmission uh, among close contacts. Uh, we also uh, uh, know uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, if we look at the MERS, that severity can go from mild to severe, uh, severe cases. And this is what we are really looking at now, to understand the, exactly how easily it's being transmitted, also what's exact severity, and at the same time we have to see what is the source. But there are many, many things we know, and we know that uh, what is important really is that uh, uh, population uh, does uh, precautionary measures uh, such as hand hygiene, such as avoiding contact with uh, people with the flu-like symptoms, uh, such as avoiding contact uh, with, uh, with uh, live animals in the market, and especially uh, uh, to not travel if they feel sick, but rather to look for the, for the medical care. Well, you mentioned there um, a lot about the coronavirus, the source not to travel, listen to authorities. But do you think um, enough information about the virus is being shared by China? Are you getting enough information from China? <laughs> Well, China was very, very quick in identifying this uh, virus. Uh, from the first reports uh, that emerged on 31st December, it took only around 10 days to identify the virus. And what's more important, to immediately share the genetic sequence of the virus with WHO and with the, all other countries. This, were, this helped other countries basically to be able to test other people. Uh, we know that the, the China is doing a, a lot of measures that they seem appropriate uh, to contain the uh, the virus, and they are working with us. We had a, a team of people uh, with them in Wuhan uh, a couple of days ago uh, to try and really to answer those questions that I already mentioned about the source, about severity, about transmissibility. So, Tarek, the committee weighing the decision was divided almost 50-50, as we understand it. That's according to the chairman. What were the issues of contention? Can you share that? Well, I was not personally listening to the debate. Uh, I was answering journalists' uh, queries. Uh, but but uh, really, uh, what what, uh, what the committee is looking is uh, risk of international spread, uh, what containment measures need to be put in place, what are the characteristics of the virus. So some committee members probably thought uh, that uh, we 
need to get a little bit more information to understand exactly those things that we still don't know, and we need to see what exactly countries uh, need uh, and still lacking in terms of preparedness. Uh, but again, the fact of declaring public health emergency of national concern or not declaring does not mean that WHO is not issuing already recommendations at on January 10th, so 10 days after the first reports, WHO has issued a set of guidance for health practitioners on how to uh, detect new cases, how to treat people who are sick, how to uh, reinforce infection prevention and control measures in the hospitals, and how to uh, uh, work on a risk communication. Now, I mentioned infection prevention control measures in the hospitals because this is a really important point. We know that some of the infected people are health workers. We know from coronaviruses uh, that the health workers are at particular risks. For example, what we have seen in MERS, that there were a number of uh, nosocomial infections in health facilities. Uh, and, and, and we need really to make sure that, uh, that, that uh, people working in health centers and in hospitals uh, are implementing uh, standard procedures when dealing with uh, infectious pathogens so we avoid uh, health workers getting sick. Well, one of those uh, measures are quarantine measures. China, we know, is taking unprecedented quarantine measures. And the WHO chief said that he hopes that they will be effective and short. What's your assessment of those measures so far? Well, exactly. As I already said, uh, uh, countries may uh, uh, introduce measures based on their assessment of the, of the risk. Uh, and, uh, and as Director General said, we hope that these measures will be effective and they will not last uh, very long. Uh, you see, uh, when you have an outbreak of a new virus, you are putting in place immediately two types of measures, containment measures and mitigation measures, meaning what I was already explaining, uh, having health systems uh, 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 ready to detect and to respond to such an outbreak. Containment measures basically aim to reduce the risk of transmission. Now, it's always a difficult balance uh, to, to strike uh, between a, a possible benefit for the population of those containment measures and eventual social disruptions. So countries uh, may, uh, uh, may uh, make their own analysis and, and introduce uh, measures as they feel appropriate. Thank you so much, um, Tarek, for speaking to us. We've been speaking there to Tarek Yasarovich, spokesman from the World Health Organization.